First, extract the lines that shine like caught fish wriggling, each of them glinting one line at a time. Hold them steady in the light, and after a while, when you come to feel they belong to you, release them back into the brothing the, folk, the poem alone is beginning to make. Phrased sauce, simmered, sautéed with chef's finesse. The poem's pulse will throb, and you'll feel it, even as it begins to breathe easy into itself. It draws you there to follow the glinting in, down closer to where the lines were born. A Heaney poem lives and thrives by tasting itself and then by forming into fuller flavor, common words from common roots, potato words, but salted and seasoned, that's what makes the difference. A boiling now that's frothing everything high above the place it started from. Somewhere in that hover between what is and what he shows you there can be, is the place you'll find where the poet went and where he wanted to meet you. I wrote a poem once about simultaneous universes, and I didn't know anything at the time about the fact that uh, the string theorists were kind of coming up with the same conclusion. So when the string theorists saw my poem, they published it. Anyway, this is it. It's called Fog Maybes. We could all be wrong, but this is the way they think and the way I was thinking of all. Fog maybe is the thought that grows in his mind as the foghorn wails deep in the night is this, that maybe all choices are lived, maybe dilemmas are only those last conscious moments before cells divide. Maybe the less traveled road in the yellow wood always yields two parts to a chooser, one that goes the well-trod path and never slows to write a poem. Maybe every time a choice is made, both choices form and spawn another world springing from the road that doesn't seem to be taken. And awareness is only one branch of what is real. Maybe in a world somewhere, it's a part of you who stops listening to the foghorn's repetition, doesn't go to the window, to peer at the white fog that curls against it, but simply drifts back to sleep and never stops to ponder this very thought. Maybe, but what does it matter at all? There really isn't a need to know the course of other roads beyond some vague sense that every alternative is possible and might do just as well or even better, perhaps, in reaching the end of things. And this final, final poem is, is about these two giant cedar trees right beside Boys Hall, Hall on, on the, the campus. And the cedar trees just make this complete shade, notwithstanding the fact that the sun is blazing onto the sycamores around them. It's called in the late, later afternoon sun. Even though the cedars are succeeding at covering their own dark and almost black splendor in shadows the sun untouches, still patches of brilliance on green leaves and straight trunks of sycamores settle into places of the sun's own choosing, as if it never considered the cedars. Bright light come to earth at last, through blue distance down to day's ending. Awareness now that what is beautiful sometimes is to be reckoned and predicted in lightness and in dark, certain as the arc of the star that sourced it. <laughs>